Hey everyone and welcome to our 23rd episode of Brew Talk with Mr. Beer. My name is Robert Lewis, your host. I got Zach here with me again Cheers. this week. We appreciate you taking time to join us and watch us today. Before we dive into our topic, talk about what we're drinking today. What do you got? Little Black Eye Bach, our Shiner Bach clone. Yes, we launched that last week. Awesome yes. recipe. Three new Oktoberfest recipes last week. If you haven't brewed them, you should brew those. It's the perfect time of year to brew it. I got our Canadian Blonde because it was on tap and available. And it's really good, so, you know, it kicks off pretty easy. Um, all right, so for today's topic, we're going to talk about yeast again. Yeah. I thought it would be cool to talk about, like, the flavor profiles of yeast. So we kind of did the first part of our yeast series, if you missed, was kind of just a basic overview of the different types of yeast that are out there. Um, so now we wanted to really just dive into how the yeast can affect your beer, which is really kind of cool, the different flavors that it offers, or that it can change, I guess. So just yeah. offer flavor, I guess that does make sense. <laughs> uh, so we're going to kind of just go through the styles that we sell on the website. So there's a ton of styles out there. We don't sell them all. We sell the ones that are best for us. We know yeah. the unlimited yeast possibilities. It seems yeah. like hundreds and hundreds so, of options. Yeah. So since Zach is the expert, I'll let him explain it and kind of, and it'd be a good tip too if you want to create your own recipes or brew your own things about selecting the right yeast when you want to do something cool. Uh, so I'll kind of start with the basic yeast that we seem to use a lot of our recipes. Mm -hmm. US05, it's a great yeast. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that guy. So USO5 is great because it's a clean yeast, and by that I mean it doesn't leave a lot of its own flavors behind. It is a high flocculating yeast, so it sells out, doesn't leave a lot of haze. It's great for multi or hoppy beers because they bring out those flavors. And it ferments just enough where you don't end up with too much malt, but not dry, like a Saison would be or anything yeah. like that. So it's a good, balanced, tasty yeast, great for, you know, Hoppy beers primarily, but anything really. Yeah, it's a, it seems to be a, a well-used yeast. Uh, I think something very similar to that, USO4. Uh, tell us a little bit about that guy. USO4 is a little different because it's better for like UK style beers. It's great for those with, that you want a malt forward profile with because it just leaves behind enough of those residual sugars mm -hmm. that you get a lot of that flavor through. So it's great for British pales and bitters. It's great for stouts and porters. It's that, you know, Irish reds. That yeah, cool. yeah, so when they brew their own recipe, they want IPA, 05, they want a little more malty flavors, the 04. Yeah. They're good to go. Yeah. Uh, so we got WB06, which is a wheat yeast. This seems to be a really popular one that makes really cool flavors that yeah. I know you really like using, so. It's definitely great for beers with wheat in them, the yeah. ice beer. And stuff like that. It is also more malty, but it does leave behind more floating yeast. Mm -hmm. It's not as high flocculating as the others. Um, if you ferment at higher temperatures, you'll get a lot of those peppery, clovey, estery flavors. And high, I mean like 78 degrees high. Like yeah. It ferments or, quick and leaves a lot of those banana type flavors. Yep. Or you can just ferment it normally and it'll be a little cleaner, a little more subtle. It kind of depends on what you want. Yeah, that's a whole yeah. other topic about temperature range <laughs> yeah. within itself. Yeah. Um, so I personally know a lot about this one. Uh, S33 yeast, kind of what, what is that guy? S33 is uh, supposed to be like a Belgian style yeast for Trappist ales and stuff like that. It doesn't have a huge following though. It's yeah. kind of hit or miss on yeah. what most people think. It's great for doing sort of historic style beers because it doesn't flocculate well, leaves a lot of residual behind, doesn't ferment crazy high alcohol beers. So it's good for the traditional stuff, but it's kind of a little odd one. Kind of, yeah. yeah, that's what it seems like. It's kind of just there. Yeah. You use it when you need it. It's fun to play with though. Yeah. Um, let's dive into some of the more funkier yeast that mm -hmm. are out there. Uh, T58 O seems to be a pretty unique one. Yeah, that is definitely more true to style for the Belgian kinds of yeasts. It gives a lot of peppery flavors, so it's great for that sort of, you know, those Belgian styles. It's it's great for anything you want to kick up a notch with a yeah. little bit of a little, little spice. Bit of funk. Yeah. Uh, so we also got the Bel Cezanne yeast, which is just a perfect Cezanne yeast. It seems like yeah. it just crushes it. Yeah, it, it does a fantastic job at really drying things out. Ferments quick, it's a monster. It just goes right to town, and it leaves those Brett-like flavors behind, so those funky, farmhouse, rustic style beers. It's perfect. Yeah, it seems to work really well in those styles. Um, lager yeast, not something we use a lot of, we do offer. We got a few re recipes that use it now. Yeah. Uh, S23 seems to be always a very popular one, though. Kind of what's, yeah. what's that guy about? So that one's actually used a lot in actual breweries in Western Europe. So that's a, it's a very good yeast if you're going to go that route. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those breweries can't be wrong. But it makes a nice <laughs> clean beer without leaving a whole lot of the fruity esters behind. But it has a touch. So it's, it's good. Yeah. Cool. And then the, the last one we got is our W3470, another lager yeast. Yep. 
What's that guy about? And that one's actually derived from a strain from a, another German brewery, Von mm -hmm. Stefan, that is just world renowned for its delicious lagers. So it's one of those that is perfect for those bready, biscuity, pilsner, you know, lagery goodness. It's just fabulous. Yeah, you can brew true lagers and use the lager yeast and you'll get a night and day experience making oh, lagers. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. If you have the ability to ferment at 55, you should That's definitely try it. You get a small mini fridge from Walmart, yep. temperature controller, you're good to go, man. You got it's it. like one to two LBKs. Perfect. Sure. Perfect. All right, uh, that's gonna wrap up today. We got a quick, easy episode for you. So awesome, a lot of knowledge though that, that, that we dropped in this quick, <laughs> quick time frame, which is always cool. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to watch us. Hope you learned something. Yeah. Uh, we do put our videos on our blog page every day, so mystery.com slash blog. You can see all the videos, see all of our old videos. You can read the text in there and all that stuff like that. All that fun stuff. Uh, we got them on our YouTube page and on our Facebook page. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give us a like, share, comment, thumbs up, anything that we know that you enjoyed it works. Um, also, if you want to learn more about Mr. Beer Brewing with Mr. Beer, you have to join our Mr. Beer Brewing Society on Facebook. We are approaching 500 members, which is really cool. Yeah. Growing super fast. It's, it's more posts than that I think we can keep up with. <laughs> That's why Ashley does a very good job at it. She's in there answering all the questions, taking care of all the stuff. You'll learn a ton by joining that group, I guarantee it. You can yeah. find it by going to Facebook and searching Mr. Beer's Brewing Society or going to our Facebook page, going to groups, clicking join, answer the three questions. We want to see if you don't answer them. So they like every video. But it's fun, I guess, just to repeat myself, answer the three questions. We will let you in. Yes. Uh, that's going to wrap it up. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you for watching. Everyone have a great weekend. Cheers. Cheers.